But for those who are watching on YouTube, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. We greatly appreciate you guys joining us week after week and supporting us. Feel free to navigate in the description box below. There's some links for you to better uh, uh, get to know us. You can give, get plugged in if you're in the Charlotte area with our Propel Mentoring Program, or just simply get me out to your city. I would love to come to share the gift, Lord willing, because I only go where he sends me. But if he, does, if he allows me to go, I know that the gift that he has for me will be greatly uh, 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 a blessing to you. So feel free to contact me, but please also comment below. Let me know what you got from this message and what you would like uh, um, to work on in your journey with God. But for those who's in the room, but also I forgot, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, thank you guys so much for listening. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can download this week's worksheet right now, Facebook Live. Actually, the worksheet is now available if you want to hurry up and get that worksheet and journey alone if you got a printer. But if you're watching on YouTube, feel free to pause this video, download this worksheet so you can have a better unplug uh, workshop experience so you'll be able to go and navigate what the great people in this room are doing now. But turn me your Bibles to 1 Timothy 6, <clears throat> excuse me, 6 through 11. We're going to read this passage of scripture and really uh, anchor in on some points briefly, but get into what we didn't get to last week. The Bible reads, but godliness with contentment is a great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many things. Before I pray, can someone give me a water and a paper towel? I greatly appreciate it. <clears throat> but let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this great opportunity you've given us to dive deeper into Timothy, to see how we can better be content with you anchored in you. Lord, help us to see our hearts as clearly as we need to, to help us be able to navigate those jealousies, those emotions that creep up. But Father God, like I always say, I pray Lord, that you'll be able to speak through me like a, a vessel that desperately knows how much he needs you. I thank you, Father God, for everything that will be spoken today will be precisely what you have for these great men and women, both locally and watching online. Speak through me, Father. You know I need your help. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Today's topic is going to be the opposite of jealousy and our hashtag. Thank you, fellas. Appreciate y'all. The hashtag for this evening will be is or will be be content. <clears throat> Tonight's hashtag is be content. So if you're watching this online, you're listening, you're in the room and you have a point that really hits you and you know it may be a benefit to your followers, feel free to at me at my coach Josh and utilize the hashtag be content. Let's get right into the problem. Many believers are not content with where God has them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Many believers are not content, not with where they have themselves, but mostly where God has them. They have allowed comparisons and carnal ambitions to lead them beyond their place of maturity, both mentally and physically. They have allowed comparisons, <clears throat> excuse me, and carnal ambitions to lead them beyond their place of maturity, both mentally and physically. God knows your level of maturity and will not lead you into any place where you cannot manage it. <clears throat> excuse me. Many believers are not content with where God has them. They have allowed comparisons and carnal ambitions to lead them beyond their place of maturity, both mentally and physically. God knows your level of maturity and will not lead you into a place where you cannot manage it. God cares about your ability to manage. Those who are mature are able to see the success of others and not be jealous because they are completely aware of what they can manage. A lot of people get so caught up in the idea of, well, they make it look so easy. That if they are so successful, I want what they have, not knowing they don't have the ability to manage where they are. If you can't manage how they practice, how are you going to be able to manage the profits off their performance? Many people get so caught up, I just want profit, but don't want to, be, to put the practice in, and you're wondering why. They can succeed, but you can't. Many believers are, con are not content with where God has them, meaning... 
if you really understand God, your whole aspect of life is already done, completed. There's nothing new that you're gonna do that's gonna catch God off guard. There's nothing you can do to alter his plan. There's nothing you can do in your own ability because he knew you before you was even formed. He knows exactly how you're gonna die. He knows who you're gonna marry. He knows every aspect of your life. Therefore, that should come from me, knowing that if I'm content in him and deeply and deepening my fellowship in him, I know for a fact I will eventually get to the place that I got destined for me to be. But when a person is outside of that fellowship with God, they start complaining. They start getting upset because they're like, why haven't I have this yet? Where is this person? Where is this opportunity? But they fail to realize that God being a good father will never put you in a place that, will miss, that you will mismanage. That's why we got to get to a place where we say, God, if I'm not there yet, it's either because it's not your timing or I'm not doing my best with what I have. I love the word understanding. The Bible talks about with understanding a house is established. Understanding. Do you know what the word understanding means? I'm able to stand under something without it breaking me. That when I understand something, it means I completely know about it, I fully grasp it, and I have fruit of application with it. If you truly understand about health and, and success, and you truly understand about what it takes to be successful, then you can bear the weight of it. That when I understand it and I apply it, I can actually stand up under the weight of it because I fully grasp it. So many people think they know or partially know, but if they, until they get into the level of experience, they're gonna be proven that they didn't quite understand every aspect of it. Oh, I can easily watch Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. I can watch any group of people from the Patriots, who was at the top of their field. I can easily be on the outside looking in and be like, well, they make it look easy. Or I understand football, but how can I understand football better than the people who actually play it? See, there's a difference between knowing and applying and when you truly understand the character of God you are saying God right now I can stand under and understand and believe and and know that it's just not my time man sometimes we got to get to a place where we're okay with however long it takes and just because people get things before you get them doesn't mean they didn't cut corners to get it I'd rather go around every corner and not have to redo what I've done than to cut corners and in life, life will prove that I didn't follow all the way through. Just because people get it faster than you doesn't mean you should accelerate your life to catch up with them because there are things in life called penalties that put people back 15, 20 yards, 15, 20 years. But they were so successful a long time. Look at Russell Simmons. Look at all these people who are very successful, who are now off of allegations, have to pull out of their businesses. Just because people knew, I don't know if he did it or didn't do it, but what I do know is the allegations are there. And what are we as believers comparing ourselves when we know it's not wise? Only God knows the true merit on what pushes a person to be successful where they are. Some people do drugs, some people do a lot of different things to succeed, but the believer, only thing they need to succeed is trusting in the sufficiency of Christ and trusting in his saving work and his perspective on your life, knowing if you don't got it, for, if he, anything you don't receive from God is trying to, some, that thing is trying to give it to you prematurely. And you know when it's sent to you prematurely. When you deep down inside know, I can't manage this. <clears throat> crying out for a marriage, crying out for a husband, and you ain't even a wife yourself. Crying out for a wife, and you ain't a husband. You don't, <clears throat> you don't even got the fundamentals. To be in the NBA, to be in any kind of league, you gotta be fundamentally sound to some degree. Listen, people wanna be fancy. The wedding looks great, but their marriage has no foundation. The wedding was funded. Sometimes it's funded through debt, but they have no equity, no foundation in what they call love. But 
People won't love without walking with the one who is love. People have the idea and the perspectives of things not knowing the true value of them. Some people allow comparisons and carnal ambitions to lead them beyond their place of maturity, both mentally and physically. Who are you comparing your life to right now? Who is that Instagram girl, that, that, that entrepreneur, that, that businesswoman? That, that, who is that person you comparing your life to? Because be very careful who you compare your life to because you don't know what has been contaminated in their life. And now all of a sudden, if you truly interviewed them, if you truly took the time to get to know them, you will really see they ain't really who you thought they were. Or some people allow carnal ambitions. I just want to be successful. I just want to be rich. What is success? What is true success? Success is not predicated on the world's definition of it. It's predicated on what heaven defines success as. Your final destination should be your parameter or your barometer on what success is. Not your temporary home. I'm going to go consult a human being to find out what success is. Is they going to be judging me? Is they going to be the one saying, oh, well, you know, no, no, no. God's going to be like, even I wasn't successful in the world's terms. I was the one that told 5,000 people, thousands of people leave. I was the one that was okay with just me and God. I didn't care about all the other things that people do care about, caring about likes and shares, caring about views, caring about, yes, there's, there's some part of it in, in building your brand, but man, what are you really building? And who are you really building for? I was guilty of carnal ambitions, man. I have to daily fight the urges of competition. I have to fight that Nigerian strand of, of money and success. I'm not sitting there saying I'm, I'm, I'm falling into the evil paralysis, not paralysis, in the, in the uh, evil pause of it. But what I'm saying is I got to be consciously aware that, yo, Josh, when you look at this pastor, I was watching a pastor the other day and I had to check my heart. This is two days ago. I forgot the brother's name, a, new, a black guy out of Tulsa. Where I used to go to school. I think I might even know him, right? Got all these videos. I watched one of his videos, sounds similar to my stuff. And something in me started hating. Then I was like, you getting 500,000 views off of what the coach says? And God said, brother, he might not even bit off you. You know, you get pride, oh, he biting off the coach. Coach, is, <laughs> coach Josh is ghostwriter. Yep, I gave him that. And God said, don't worry about that because the message is not predicated on the messenger. It's predicated on who anointed the messenger. So God had to check me. And I said, yo, that was in my heart. Before I even preached, God made sure I saw this preacher. And I had to check myself because I went to the comments, y'all. Oh, man, you know your heart. I went to the comments <laughs> and all these people talking about, I never heard nothing like this before. Wow, this man's anointed. I was like, man. And I said, you know what? This thing is never over until it's over. And I know for a fact that I have to always, my level of spiritual awareness will determine how quickly I pull that thought from being manifested into jealousy, which then leads to bitterness, which then leads to comparison, which lead, then leads to carnal ambitions, and then leaves me Christless and in a crisis emotionally. Because now, my whole life, I was, I was over there trying to think of a uh, uh, YouTube, well, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do a whole series on relationships, on, on Periscope, and God said, man, go talk about starving the flesh. I said, boy, God, you always know a way to keep your people humble. Because he says, man, promotion doesn't come by marketing strategies from the north or the west or east or west. It comes from above. He checked me. He was like, Josh, what if you never get past 40,000, 45,000 subscribers? Would you still be as fervent? Like, that's a real question. If, yo, if you, that cousin that you know you don't like, if she gets the job you want, if she gets the husband you want, if she gets the money that she wanted, would you still at the cookout be like, baby girl, I'm happy for you? Or oh, that young man, that man you mentored, you disciple, that young man that you gave advice to, that young man that was once your, your employee, he pops off and wins, are you gonna be happy for them? We don't know our state of jealousy until our heart is tested. 
Our level of jealousy, our heart on jealousy is not tested until you see people that you don't necessarily agree with succeed. Or entrepreneurially, you just want to be at the top. And in the process, you forget what this whole thing was about from the first place. I have to guard my heart, man. It's easy to be jealous and very hard to be content. Being hard and content at 42,000 subscribers. And God was like, brother, you got 42,000. There's somebody with just four. Sometimes we want to elevate beyond a place when God is saying, I might keep you here for 10 years until you get your heart right. Could we be where we are because God is saying, I'm giving you a chance to get your heart right? Or God can be like, I can really push you there and show you how much this thing will destroy you. Jealousy is subtle. You're hugging on them one day, envious of them the next, all because of something made by man. In heaven, there is no class. There is no rich. There's no poor. It's nothing but saved. Now, will there be roles and stuff like that? Of course. But everybody hearts up there going to be like, I'm just happy to be a street sweeper. If you ain't happy to serve down here, you ain't going to be happy to serve in heaven. Because what if you get to heaven and your first thing is to sweep the streets of, of, of some low lame, the bottom tier of the Bible characters in the Bible, sweep their porch for a thousand years? How would you feel? Or will you just be happy that I'm sweeping a floor of gold? Heart is everything. The definition of discontentment. A restless desire or craving for something one does not have. A restless desire or craving for something one does not have. Let's look at the definition of contentment. To be free from care because of satisfaction in Christ and, and with what is already one's own. Discontentment, a restless desire or craving for something one does not have. And contentment, to be freed from cares because of satisfaction in Christ and with what is already one's own. That might be a run on sentence, but don't mind me. I never claim to be a great person in grammar. But what I'm trying to say is... Discontentment means you are restless. You can't sleep at night because you don't have what somebody else has. Restless because you're single. Restless because you're in the, in the grind stage of your marriage. You're restless because you know your business is not where it is. You're restless because somebody else is succeeding and winning, but you're not. Where in your life are you restless? Because if God is present, we should always be at rest, knowing that everything, because I love him and I'm called to his purpose, will work out for my good, even when there's no good present. But I got to always remind myself, good as a person is present who is God. And if he's really good to me, trust and know that God said, I don't care if your heart is right. It's just not the right time. People get restless like, God, I really have been faithful. John the Baptist's mother, the Bible says they were blameless. She was serving God's place, but she was still barren. How many years was she barren? And she, when she got the baby, she said, the, she didn't say thank God for a child. She was like, thank God you took my reproach away from women, which means she really had a human distaste but just because you have a distaste doesn't mean you're not content. It's, God is not saying be happy-go-lucky throughout every stage of struggle. Jesus was probably hungry day 24. He even said in the garden, Lord, if it be, I will take this cup from it. But in before the sentence had a period, he says, not my will, but done. So Jesus in his human self was honest. God's not saying <clears throat> not to be honest. Just don't allow your dishonesty from keeping you from being completely faithful to me. When God's saying you're dishonest, when you're not willing to look at yourself and be aware that there could be some things in you that's keeping you from getting. Listen, God, people think we're waiting on God. God's really to a degree waiting on us. 
we think, oh, I'm just waiting on God. God's like, bro, are you ready yet? I got some places I want to take you. And you jealous of someone who actually put the work in? We become worthless when we don't work. Work determines your worth. Your work ethic determines your worth in the marketplace. If you do nothing, you are valued at nothing. If I bring an unplugged to somebody, you know what I'm going to tell them? There's nine years in this, 22,000 plus dollars into this. I got a thousand plus videos in it. I got this. I'm, I, you see the work ethic. That determines your worth. When I, when I was first getting um, speaking engagements, people weren't paying me nothing because I was new. I wasn't getting, I was getting them little small love off, you know, them little handshake, little envelopes, you hear quarters in there, you be like, oh, <laughs> this, is, this is y'all best, okay. Over time, as you build yourself, your worth increases. That don't mean I go around talking about 20,000 a show, 20,000, speaking to me, I got to be honest with myself and say, hey, first off, what my pastor told me, which was, which was another humbling thing was, he says, when it comes to those colleges and those businesses, you do charge that 2,500. You can charge that because what I learned was 3,000. What I learned was, <laughs> it goes up every minute. <laughs> what, I, what I learned was your price go up to the place where people are willing to pay you. So I'm not going to go by what the first people paid me. The last person paid me $3,000. I'm going 3,000. But he said, when it comes to those churches, you ask for a love offering. He said, you put a burden on the people that actually got uh, grants. You could put a burden on them because that's grant money. But you don't go to no church talking about $3,000. Freely I receive, freely I give. That's a mindset. A lot of people don't care about people so much. They don't care about the heart of people. They just care about money and success. You got to get to a place where you say, I'm not going to allow jealousy to make me run over people because it's in me serving people that people elevate me. I'm telling you right now, I'm a rich man, not because of how much money I have, but I'm rich because of my relationships. If I lost my house today, if I didn't have a roof because I treat people well, if someone saw me without because of how I treated them, they're going to be like, Mr. Ezzy ain't going to have no roof over his head. Mr. Ezzy, because you need. But if you always run and buy people's needs when they see your need one day, they'll run right past you too. We got to get to a place where we get back to what it means to be human. To get back to a place where we understand what it means to build relationships and not be jealous of each other and celebrate everybody's wins and not to celebrate their losses. <laughs> when someone loses, you can't be like, yes. <clears throat> yes, you lost today. <laughs> no, no, you got to say, you know what? I'm not going to laugh at you while you walk to the ditch. I'm going to be in a ditch when you get there to help you out of it. What most of us do, because people ain't going to turn around. You know they walk into the ditch. You can tell them there's a ditch over there. I don't care. I'm going to marry him. And you know there's a ditch over there. Nah, she's bad though. Uh, there's a ditch over there. Oh, but this marketing scheme. You just say, you know what? Two per limit. But because I love you, when you fall into that ditch, I'm not going to laugh at you. I'm going to be there graciously to help you. You got to replace your jealousy with grace and kindness. If you don't, Soon as your sister make it, you will find that evil rise out of your heart to try to tear her down. People tear down their own kids when they see that their kids are about to be sick. like parents. They, 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 that's why, listen, I don't care what your mama said, daddy said, they could be telling you not to do something because they don't want you to be better than they was. People got some dark stuff that they have yet to deal with. Somebody is going through that. Your dad is talking about you ain't going, what you, what you mean you're going to what? Nah, we ain't going. It happened in my own family. My dad, and he had great intentions. But Africans want their kids to be doctors and lawyers. Let's just keep it real. Africans want you to be, be these, 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 these pillars of society. But when you get to a place where you say, it's only what God wants me to do, you don't got time to worry 
about what somebody else says because they can't live your life for you. When you sitting being a doctor, made all that money, got all that debt, but you don't feel fulfilled, God ain't gonna be standing and talking about, oh, your dad had good intent. He's gonna be like, what did I tell you to do? Contentment. <clears throat> Contentment is to be free from the care, oh Lord, to be free from care because of satisfaction in Christ and with what is already one's own. Contentment is not saying that I'm 100% okay with where I am. Contentment is I'm 100% okay with who I'm with where I am. Because I know there's not a president, a king, a councilman, a mayor, a lawyer, a person, a stalker that can stop what God wants me or you to do, period. So if I'm here, there's a reason why I'm here. Therefore, if I know that I'm faithful to God and I know that I'm really in love with him, then I know for a fact, yes, I may not be in the brackets that I would like to be in. Yes, I may not be entrepreneurially or ministry <clears throat> wise where I saw myself being, but I know who I'm with. That if he has me here, he has me here for a reason. Do you know why God has you where you are? Number one, because he's hiding you. He's hiding you. He's saying, <laughs> those some devils up there that you ain't ready for. If you really was a fly on the wall in these successful people's mansions, they're not even happy with the money they have. The Bugatti, the Bentley, the Instagram model beside him, he's not happy. The girl with 1.7 million followers, but her main, the core fan base of who follows her are lustful men, she ain't happy. People are where they are, and without God, no matter how high you go, you're not gonna be happy. I'd rather be at the lowest place with God because I know I will be full of joy than, be, than to be at the highest place on earth without him. There's people who can't even put mirrors in their mansions because they're haunted by demons. Haunted by ghosts. They can't look at themselves because they see the demons on their face. This is real. People actually say this in interviews that they're not that happy. I don't even like one camera in my face, let alone paparazzi. So these people are not happy, but we jealous of them. There's girls out there dating basketball players and doing all these different things and, and making all this attention and gathering, but they gathering the wrong kind. They're not happy. Nobody posts their unhappy days. We don't, and we don't got that much money. Do you know contentment is just saying, God, I'll go wherever you want me to go, even if where I go is not gonna build any growth for me entrepreneurially, ministry, relationally, I will go wherever you wanna go. Because wherever God tell, tells you to go, wherever you go because of God, you will be sustained. <clears throat> but what is sustaining? The Bible reads, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. Verse 8, but if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. Y'all got on clothes, right? <clears throat> How many meals you had today? Unless y'all doing the uh, uh, intermittent fasting. How many meals did you have? Two meals. Everybody's clothed. Look, y'all, you definitely got some bounty at home. Some, some, good, some good detergent. Everybody looking good. No crust in their eyes. Everybody look well. God is saying you are, you should be okay with that. Because God can take you to some villages where people don't have roofs. He'll take you to some villages where they was wearing the same outfit, they've been wearing the same outfit for weeks. And God is saying when your perspective is always high, you wanna appreciate where you are. Because if you truly had your perspectives on where people are low, you will then be appreciative of where you are. How can you be appreciative of where you are if you're always looking at people that is at that place and you completely lend a deft eye to 80% of the world. 
contentment is putting things in the right, per, contentment is having the right perspectives and putting things in the right area of priority. Where is your heart at today? Are you truly appreciative of where God has for you? Or God has you? Are you really at a place where you're saying, if I feel jealousy, because you can't, you don't know when you're going to feel it. The sin is not feeling an emotion. It's acting off the emotion. If in one gear you can't say, you know what, why am I even being jealous? I'm actually blessed. I always make it a habit for me that the first thing I do when I wake up, my best of my ability, sometimes I go to the bathroom first, sometimes I go get a tea first, but to the best of my ability, I always begin to say things like, God, I'm thankful. 95% of my days, I take that first breath and I'm like, God, I'm thankful. I step out of that bed, I look around, I'm like, man, when you, when you start your day counting your blessings, you, you won't waste your day wondering about the blessings you don't have. Because all of us are blessed with blessings if we truly see them correctly. What causes discontentment? I won't even get past most of these notes. What causes discontentment? Number one, this is the process. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven Ds. Okay, y'all ready? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what causes discontentment? How the devil gets us discontent with God? Number one, detect. Number two, distract. Number three, drive away. Number four, dilute. Number six, hold on, one, two, three, four. Number five, discontent. Number six, deal. And lastly, done. <clears throat> the process of destroying you through discontentment leads to him first trying to detect if there's anything in you that he can use to draw you away from God. His goal is to detect weakness. The enemy's objective is to scan you, observe you, thoroughly investigate you, to see where in your heart right now you are not completely content in God. If it's loneliness, he's gonna go to that area. If it's lust, he's gonna go to that area. If it's pride, he's going to go to that area. They are never going to attack you in the areas where you are your strongest. They're always going to detect and go after the areas where you show weakness. When you understand that, then your understanding of demonology grows because you will begin to look at your own life and see, yo, they always attack me, but from a different angle in the same area. Different angle, same area. Next thing you know, once they detect something, they don't bring something different. They bring the specific to what you are going to be the most distracted by. They know where you are in your sexuality. They know where you are in your level of contentment. They know you based upon your practices based upon how you perform after test scores. Right now, the kids at my school are going through test scores, and right now, they're building prisons off the, the, the test scores from third graders. Building prisons based off the test scores of third graders. The devil is building industry off the test scores of Christian performances. He sees you're not performing well. I can distract the body of Christ in this area. I can go ahead. You year three with God. You three months in God. They say, okay, I have enough test scores right here to know I'm going to fund most of my energy in this industry to distract people from having the power to, to change my kingdom. They are more scared of you than you should be of them. You're the one that got the power. You're the one in the Garden of Eden. Dominion was transferred over. 
Satan didn't have dominion over the earth, the birds in the air. He didn't. The Bible said we did. But when we disconnected ourselves from God and disobey him, we gave him the dominion now. But Christ came back and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and he gave us the power now, but we don't execute in it. Because instead of basking and submitting under accountability, being self-examining, seeing where I can grow, seeing where I can mature, making sure that I watch and pray that I don't fall into temptations, instead of doing all that, all we do is nothing. And we wonder why. We are so easily distracted. Oh, Netflix got a new special. Oh, I'm gonna watch that today. Oh, oh. <clears throat> you could be in front of your Bible. Oh, oh. That's, that's what you, that's what we all do. Oh, 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 oh. No, that was a good word. We do it all the time. What's gonna give you more value for your eternity? Carnal shows or reading God's word? Oh, reading God's word, nobody wants to read. Well, you can listen to it. Well, I don't want to listen to, that's dramatized versions. I still got my dramatized CDs from 10 years ago. You hear that, you hear the cows, you hear the, no, they had cows in the Middle East. You hear the, the lambs, you know, and you, you, hear, you hear people on. Listen, if you don't want to read, there's, there's avenues for you to strengthen yourself. But they're always going to be detecting. After Jesus was tempted, the Bible reads that Satan left to a more opportune time. If you're given him opportunity, he will capitalize on every opportunity you give them. I don't like saying him, because he's not omnipresent, them. Even Jesus gave credit to his kingdom. He was like, if Satan was divided against himself, his kingdom would not stand. And as we look amongst the horizon of the universe, of the world, isn't his kingdom standing? That means he is running a well-oiled machine. We got to get to a place where we say, God, I don't want anything that the devil can detect strongly enough to distract me. Because once he distracts you, the driving you away from God's presence begins. I'd rather for me to detect my own issues, <clears throat> to stay in God's presence, than to be uh, um, ignorant and naive and allow the enemy to detect it and drift me. I rather detect what's wrong with me. Yo, every day you should self-examine your flesh and execute your flesh if you want to be successful. Don't let a day go by or at least 48 hours go by where you don't take time to say, how is Josh doing today? Oh, my bad. Ask yourself. You can ask how I'm doing too. But I'm just saying, <laughs> is ask yourself, how am I doing? How am I performing? When I drive Durango, I know when there's a need for an oil change. You understand. When you drive your car, you start feeling the car kind of, it's not smooth. The tires, you, you, could t you could tell because the driving experience is not the same. You can tell when you haven't had an oil change in a while. You can tell when you're not riding as smoothly with God as you used to. It's best for you to detect it early before you blow an engine. Detect, distract, drive you away, and dilute your potency. Faith is a very tangible substance. The devil is not after your faith as in God. He's after your faith in functioning in the things of God. There's a difference. A lot of people got faith in God. They believe in him for the saving of their soul. But they're not executing in faith, the gift of faith. Like being able to say, I, I'm going to do it this by faith. He's after your level of potency, fervency, that's not a word, but I, I think it is. They're after your level of consistency in God. You know those days when you just like, you wake up, you're like, man, I ain't read my Bible in four days. I'm not as on fire for God as I used to be. 
It happens to everyone, even me. There's phases in your life where you get so distracted in bills <laughs> and all these different things. Life is life, yo. God's a realist. He knows, yo, relationship with him is not one of the easiest things to do. All, all it takes is one handsome man in your life and one fine girl in your life and one great opportunity. He, know, he understands transitions and how testing they can be. That when you're transitioning, your, your, <clears throat> your common grounds are not as stable. But that should make you want to fight even more because you are your most vulnerable when you transition. You are your most vulnerable, not when you are in position, but when you are in transition. When you're in position, you are familiar where you're positioned. I've been here for a while. I'm familiar. I'm aware of every exit. That's why when I go to a new restaurant, when I go to a new place, since I've never been there before, I try to find my position so I know where all the exits are. Because if something pops off, I'm going out this door. I already, in my mind, I'm already in the movie. If something pop out, I know which table to flip, which to hide by. And I'm like, I'll be, I'll be looking at them soldiers. I know how to crawl out. And that's why I'm working on my shoulders. So just in case something happened, I can also I'm carry, I should carry a pack, pack of ketchup and be like this and be like, I done got shot in the neck and let the guy walk off. Listen, you got to be you got to be ready in season out of season. You never know when something's going to pop off. But what I'm saying is, I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> when I go down them ramps, boy, it's hard to find your way back out. <laughs> anyway, um... Once he dilutes your, your potency in God, then you become discontent. The devil wants you to get your eyes off of where God truly has you. Joseph gives a great picture of this. He was in the prison. And I promise you, Joseph's perspective in the prison would have determined if he would have been successful or not. If Joseph would have been like, well, that's it. Joseph said, you know what? Even in the prison, I'm going to perform well. Even when mis uh, falsely accused, I'm still going to perform well. I don't care if you at the entry level of a new company, you perform well. I don't care where you are. You perform well because promote, listen, if I'm telling you, listen, I don't even deserve the job that I'm at now because promotion don't come from nobody else but from God for the believer, period. I'm a living witness. 97% of the jobs, who, who knows where these figures come from? But in the high 90s percentage, most of the jobs that I receive, I don't have no qualifications for. None. I don't got a degree. It don't matter because I know if I stay with God and I perform well, I do everything in, in excellence. I do my best because I know I learn so much in the process. And you better love the process more than you love the prize, because no matter where you are promoted to, there is a process right after that promotion that you're going to have to go through. No matter where you are promoted, I guarantee it, like the men's warehouse commercial, I guarantee that there's a process after that promotion. People be like, I got the promotion, but God's like, that's a process in being rich, you know. Like when I get a bunch of money, I know I'm gonna have to pay more money for those, uh, K those um, what's some dogs that can walk, walk around the house? And anyway, when you get more money, there's more processes to put in your life. It's been a long day, y'all. <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, let's keep going. Once you discontent, then that's when the devil brings in a contract so he can get a deal from you. Can I get you to marry this wrong person? Can we make a deal? Oh, you're not discontent with God? He doesn't make a deal with you when you're content in God. He tries to make a deal when you're your weakest. Look at Jesus. Oh, did the devil come make a deal with him after he was baptized by John? That was when Jesus scored 60 points. Jesus was doing good. He was strong. He didn't, make, he didn't try to make a deal until the 39th or 40th day of his fast. 
He ain't gonna try to make a deal with you when you fresh off the altar got them ugly cries. You done been rededicated to God. You done, you done went on your Twitter and talk about me and God are back in love again. We bad, we better than ever. He ain't gonna make a deal then. He's gonna try to make a deal when you begin to say, I wish I didn't take this deal with God. Man, I don't wanna walk with God, man. I, you know, man, I want some sex. I want, I want this money. I, I don't really wanna be, being faithful to God is not easy. Because sin has a way of making you love life. <laughs> sin always feel good in the moment. But sin is like Waffle House waffles. They only good two minutes after the off the griddle. After that, you ever had takeout food from Waffle House? It is not as good as eating Waffle House there, right? Go to Waffle House, try it for yourself. Take it home and watch how that waffle is spongy. That's how sin is. Sin is fresh. Sin is good when it's fresh off the griddle. But if you try to take that thing home and live with that thing, that thing ain't going to have the same taste moments later. Y'all going to appreciate these analogies. Anyway, <laughs> once he makes a deal, now he knows my job here is done. Demons do not waste their time going after people who are trapped in cycles. His goal is to get you in a cycle and say the cycle will be their master. They waste their time and energy going after the people who are content in God. Either you content or you in a cycle of sin. You can't be in two places. That's why you, give, that's why you print three. <laughs> They know that if you're in a cycle of sin, I don't have to bother you because you now have opened up a new appetite for something that wasn't for you. The devil is after your appetite because he knows going after God is an acquired taste. He knows going after God ain't gonna be like drinking Kool-Aid and lemonade and things with a lot of sugar and salt. He knows that, that God is very bland and God is very, he, he, God, you know, God, uh, he understands that not everybody's gonna be willing to eat raw and, and food that, that is really nourishing for them. Everybody wants it more salty and more sugary. Am I wrong? Most people and most of our sicknesses comes from extra seasonings, extra supply. When God say, man, I'm the best and I'm good for you the way that I am. You don't got to add nothing to me. You don't got to subtract nothing from me. If you got me, you're guaranteed to be good. The devil say you're done once you make the deal. All these people in Hollywood and all these people in the world who talk about they made deals with the devil. You don't make a deal with a liar. Because he's going to be like, you know what? I'll give you everything you ever wanted. He tempted Jesus with the turning stones and the bread because he said, you know, I want to see if Jesus can, can satisfy his own hunger. If you read deeper into the gospel, the Bible, he even told his disciples, he says, I have a hunger you know not of. For my hunger is to do the will of God. Your hunger for the will of God should trump any carnal hunger. If your hunger for the world is greater than your hunger for God, you will sell your soul. And the devil don't even got to put a contract and get no blood off of you for there to be a deal. He just says, give me another piece of your soul. He'll come back, give me 25% more of your soul. He always going to continue to get royalties off of everything you do because he got stake in you. That's why you got to say, I'm not going to make no subtle or specific deals with the devil because I know he's going to always come back and ask for more. He said, Jesus... I'm going to take you to this high place. And I want you to jump. And the devil knows the word too. He says, will not God send the angels that you won't even bump your foot against a stone? What Satan was trying to get Jesus to do was to get famous quick. Oh, if you're out there eating a sandwich outside of Starbucks, outside of Galilee, and you see this man jump off a cliff and a thousand angels come and save them. People be like, who is this king who's going to take over Israel? Even when they tried to make him king, he was like, no. 
People want to be successful overnight, but don't know that it's the process that makes you actually king. Jesus said, if I, if I jump off this cliff and people get excited and come to me, it won't convert their heart. God don't want no fans. <laughs> He don't want fans. He wants faithful men and women. God don't want no fanboys and fangirls. Most people ain't even really fans of God. They bandwagoners. They just be like, you know what? Oh, oh, Jesus hot now? <laughs> you know how you get the, the van is leaving? Jesus hot now? Look at culture. Now. Jesus hot right now. But it ain't the real Jesus that's hot right now. It's a Jesus that they designed. A Jesus that didn't. A Jesus, Jesus wouldn't even go for it. Jesus like, that ain't even me. But he knew if I jump off this cliff and get everybody excited about who I am, overnight I will have millions of followers. But none of them would truly follow me where I want to lead them. And that's to deny in themselves. He also said, Jesus, if you bow down to me, I'll give you all these kingdoms. Jesus was like, but I'm king of kings though. Why should I bow down to you when my kingdom is greater than yours? Why, if you were heir and a joint heir with Christ, then aren't you above his kingdom too? So when the devil tries to sell and these demons try to make a deal with you, you gotta be very careful because his deals are not always horns and pinchforks. His deals are very subtle and cunning and if you don't self-examine your heart, you're going to be like, it is the one. She is everything I thought she'll be. You want to give me two million dollars to do what? Everybody who is not, everyone who doesn't appreciate the price that was paid for them will sell their soul for any price. You act like you don't have a price. <laughs> you don't know what your price is until the right number comes across your desk. All it takes is for him to have some type of Christianity. All it takes for so many people is the devil says, oh, how long she's been alone? Bring John in. He'll do. He's been in church for three months. He'll do. Oh, how long has he been pure? Let's get her in his DM. Let's see, let's see if that'll shake up things. Everybody has a price. If you're not every day appreciative of the price that was paid for you. There's people in the hood right now whose homie took the bullet for them. They're never going to forget that. He takes care of his wife, his kids, because he knew that bullet was for him. And his homie didn't go to jail. His homie didn't go to the hospital and came back. He actually died. Do you know the, sh the shock value that is? The level of appreciation is that someone took something that was aimed at you. The reason why we don't appreciate that because we wasn't there. I promise you, if you saw the blood dripped off, listen, doubting Thomas became uh, dedicated Thomas because he didn't ask Jesus, show me your birth certificate. He said, Jesus, show me your holes. Let me see if, there, if that was really you. And the reason why we're not where we are today and the reason why we're not helping other people because we try to hide it. I don't want you to show. I don't want you to see my weakness. I don't want you to see the work of Christ in my life. I don't, I don't even want you to no, know. Just stay away. I just want to get what I got to get in God. Like, no, man. We got to get to a place where we say, you know what, God? I'm with you and I ain't with nobody else. And because the reason why many of us are not willing to be faithful we don't see sin like it's supposed to be seen. Oh man, sin is so attractive. What's wrong with a little bit of pornography? What's wrong with just some sex? What's wrong with a little bit of drinking? What's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? It ain't wrong until you start seeing the effects of doing wrong. Sin cannot sustain you. Sin satisfies, but sin doesn't sustain. It feels good in the moment. Don't you know every time you make a mistake and you know it was wrong, you always got to go back to it to feel that ecstasy again. 
Sin doesn't keep you for five or six days. Man, that sex was so good, man. I'm good day seven. Now, I understand some people are deep in lust and some sex can make you feel good days later. But what I'm saying is it can't sustain you. Because what you got to do is I got to call him again. I got to call her again. I got to try to get back to that moment. God said, man, when you drink of me, you'll never be thirsty again. Like your soul will never thirst again. Like you can actually be like, you know what? What is sex compared to these moments with God? That's why the devil doesn't want you to taste and see that he's actually good for you. He doesn't want you to be, he wants your body to be acidic, not alkaline. He, he wants you to partake in things because whatever you do is either gonna bring ease into your life or bring disease in your life. It's all based upon your choices. I'd rather go the way that's narrow, even though it's rigged, thin, and uncomfortable and lonely. I know at the end of this, will be greater than anything that sin gives me temporarily. Are you dedicated or are you done? If you're done, you gotta check the cycles and be like, what deal did I make with the devil? What deal have I made with those demons? Because they need your sin. They need your energy from, you, from after your sin they need your energy after your, during your condemnation to be strengthened. Demons don't eat food like we eat. They eat off what people do. Spirits are who, sp demons are their functions. A demon of anger needs to find somebody restless to function as anger through somebody. All they're doing is detecting to see who has a for sale sign outside their home. They're never going to enter a home that is purchased unless that purchaser mismanages their home. Discontentment and contentment is a state of mind. It's a state of mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. It's a state of mind. I'm going to be completely honest with you, contentment, it's not easy to get to because there's so many layers in our hearts that we really have to ask ourselves the honest questions of, why am I not content with God? Can we really be happy with God alone? Faith is like walking into the fog and not hitting a thing. Walking with God is just going forward and not being afraid of what you're going to hit, what's going to come your way. Walking with God is literally like walking on water. And what I mean by that is every step looks unsure, but when I put my foot on it, there's something solid there. That when you walk with God, every step is secured, meaning if you're faithful over a little, he'll make you faithful over many. If you work unto the Lord, you will get paid back for that work. But it all boils down to how faithful I want to be. And jealousy and selfish ambition will always have you looking to the left or to the right, but not to the one who's really trying to guide you. Our sufficiency Security and our, satis and our satisfaction shouldn't be in surplus, but in the Savior. Our sufficiency, security, and our satisfaction shouldn't be in surplus, meaning success and money and gaining, but in the Savior. Sufficiency. That he's my source, he's my supplier. I'm not, I'm, money is a subsidiary of my supply. It's not the ultimate supply. The Bible reads, I think even here, for the love of money is the root of all kinds. It didn't say money was. Each and every one of us have to get a, an understanding that every good resource on the earth was meant to be managed by people who are managed by God. But when you love money, you're saying this entity, this concept, this piece of paper is where my value is. 
Are you done <clears throat> or are you dedicated? Are you content or are you discontent in God? It all boils down to your mindset. We'll finish this next week, but you have to ask yourself this question. Who am I jealous of? Because when you're not jealous, you're able to see your needs and everyone else's needs clearly. It's very important for you and myself to be very content because there are so many people today who are on the wrong path and don't know it. Selfish ambition, don't know it. Jealous and don't know it. You better consult your heart because your heart can't drive. <laughs> and your heart's gonna lead you somewhere that you're gonna one day wake up $50,000 in debt. Three or four babies with the wrong person. STD, strung out on drugs. A happy trail, but not a happy ending. I wanna be on the right trail because I know at the end of that trail, even though they may be suffering, even though they may be pain, I'm guaranteed success. Not all happy trails lead to a happy ending. And most people are on the happy trails of sin, not knowing there's a cliff two miles down, there's a cliff five miles down, there's a cliff 50 miles down, and so many people are rushing down that way and the devil knows it's hard for a Christian to succeed when they're bombarded with consequences. He knows what can a mom do if she got four babies? What, she, what can she do? What can a man do but only have a prison ministry if he's in prison? He knows you're going to suffer more than just daily the consequences of your choices. God, listen, this is a warning. You better appreciate his covering. Because, I, listen, God cover me, God keep me, but you better not play with God's grace because when God removes that covering and everybody see you bare naked, you will lose. God doesn't cover all the time. God said, you know what? I'll cover your soul. Your soul is saved. But you keep practicing this sin? Oh, <laughs> I want to humiliate myself by humbling myself than to be humiliated openly. You think Weinstein, you think Russell Simmons, you think, you think the covers are done being removed? God's warning you that it doesn't matter how powerful and how successful you are. You mismanage what's holy, you mismanage what's right, you mismanage his daughters, you mismanage his sons, you start mismanaging the, the, the honor that you have in preaching, you keep mismanaging it. And God's going to say, you know what? I'm going to remove the covers. You better practice. Listen, if you always practice things that are holy in private, you don't got to worry about nothing crazy going public. Man, I, uh, I was on Instagram roughing the game, and my phone posted my last uh, screenshot to like 50 people. And you know what I thought? Because my phone is clean, right? There's nothing on my phone. But what I thought was, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. If coach was messing around, that, that, that shook me. Even though it was not going, I was like, oh, no, hold on. I know good and well now. <laughs> it was a scripture that I, that was the last screenshot. <laughs> That's what you get from a, a pastor. <laughs> but what if? What if I had fell into some sin and started sending some other kind of pictures and started doing some other things? And all it takes is one glitch. All it takes is one mistake. 50 people. People was open to things like, okay, I saw this on Facebook. I said, but what if that was something? That's why I keep everything on you clean. Because you never know what will be used to ensure that you live a clean life later. I don't want to be humiliated and have to explain why this or that when all I can do is stay above reproach. We live in a technology age. Get out of these girls' DMs. Get out of these man's homes. Stay away. Because God, back in the day, God had a little work to do to expose you. God, all God got to do is be like, and everything's exposed. Take that as a warning. I'd rather take my time to ensure my heart is right than to rush to a place knowing my heart is wrong and then realize my heart is incapable 
of sustaining me at this place. It's best to get clean and get right now than for the wrong thing to happen at the right time. Let's pray. Father God, I pray this message was a blessing. I pray, Lord, we all stay humble <clears throat> and we clean our house before we have visitors because we know, God, you will cover, you will uncover our sins to make sure we stay saved and secured. But God, all we got to do is honor the sacrifice you made for us. And when we feel jealousy or selfish ambition raising our hearts, all we got to do is say, God, I love them. God, help me in that area. God, nip it in the bud now. Show me how. I pray, Father God, this message lays on all of our hearts for days beyond this moment. Grabbing us the moment we feel jealous and not contenting you. I love you, God. I pray this message was a blessing. You never do pray. Amen. For those watching on YouTube and Facebook Live, thank you guys so much for watching. I pray this message was a blessing. For those listening on Google Play, Apple Play, SoundCloud, thank you guys so much for listening. Do me a big favor. Feel free to share this video if it was a blessing to you. Comment below. Let me know what you got from it. Also, make sure that you navigate through the description box. If you God is leading you to give, feel free to give. If God's leading you to get involved and come in the Charlotte area, come on. And if God's leading you to bring me out to my city, also do that as well. If you're a church, you hear what I said later on in the message. But um, anything else, we'll, you'll contact us. I love you guys. Y'all be blessed. Have a blessed one.